Chief Judge Ramona Vida Gomez Manglona is a woman with many firsts. She was the first in her family to graduate from a four-year college, the first indigenous woman to pass the local bar exam, and the first and only woman district judge for the United States District Court for the Northern Mariana Islands. She is a proud wife and mother with a remarkable story that we are delighted to share with you as we celebrate women's history. I prioritize things in three ways. First is my faith, second is my family, and third is everything else, my work. In the South Pacific sits a tiny speck of volcanic mountains, uplifted coral reefs surrounded by crystal blue waters as far as the eye can see. The Northern Mariana Islands is a U.S. territory 4,000 miles away from Hawaii, and while tourists visit for a glimpse of paradise and leisure, the challenges of World War II inflicted hardships for the indigenous people of the islands. I was born here on the island of Saipan. My parents, they ran their own family company, a store, and I'm number 11 of 12 children, and so everybody in the household had to chip in and help. Manglona's parents instilled in their children a strong work ethic and a willingness to sacrifice and help others through lessons they learned. I still remember as a young seven-year-old going to the store to help my dad open it up before I went to school. So I had to earn my keep at an early age. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, American forces wanted possession of the main island, Saipan, which had been occupied by the Japanese since World War I. The Battle of Saipan was one of the bloodiest attacks in the Pacific, but despite the challenges, Manglona's parents persevered through a changing landscape. Having struggled through the various global events, World War II and all the economic turmoil, uh, including the 1973 oil crisis and the like, they really struggled, but they made it possible for someone like myself to be able to pursue an education in the United States. In 1976, the Commonwealth was established and signed into federal law by President Gerald Ford. Two years later, the new government took office, and at the age of 12, Manglona's parents sent her and her brother to live with relatives in California to further their education. Manglona stayed on the mainland throughout middle and high school. At the time, the opportunities were really just to get a high school education. My parents um, didn't have that opportunity. They grew up during the Japanese occupation of the island, so my father had the benefit of having a sixth grade education, whereas my mother was only at a third grade education. And so we didn't have that influence of a professional career to look forward to. But her introduction to California at a young age gave Maclona a new perspective, and a famous novel sparked her interest in law. Yeah, I still recall when I was in middle school talking to my mom, thinking, I'd actually like to go to law school. And for whatever reason, she was not quite in favor of it. She was thinking, just stick to business, because that's what our family's good in. Manglona wanted to achieve more. She enrolled at the University of California at Berkeley. During this time, the country was engaged in anti-apartheid protests, riots, and civil disturbances. So that started instilling in me the idea that, you know, people need to do something when there is a lot of wrong. And, and in order to do that, I just felt that you needed to be informed and educated. And being a lawyer was one of those things. Through the lens of a new generation's expectation on equality, Manglona's professional calling was solidified. She returned home to Saipan to help with the family business before going to law school on the mainland. But a handsome young attorney caught her eye, and he had plans of his own. I told him, I said, I can't marry you because I wanted to be a lawyer. I still had dreams to pursue my JD MBA, and I didn't want the marriage to hold me back and he said he promised me he promised me that he would support me 
And to convince me, he said, take a look at how my family has helped each other as well as our spouses. And so with that in mind, I thought, I think I can trust them. So that is um, how we set it out where we would still pursue our, our life together and he was supportive 110% throughout. The couple married, had two children, and when their oldest was three and their youngest one, Manglona packed her bags without her family to attend the University of New Mexico School of Law. After law school, Maglona had the option to practice law in the United States, but her goal was to return home to her family and give back to her community. Manglona's career took off. She started as a law clerk, then joined the Northern Mariana Islands Attorney General's Office and fell in love with public service. A few years later, she received a call from the governor about becoming a trial judge for the island Superior Court. Manglona was reluctant, but accepted the position. Eight years later, she was nominated by President Barack Obama as a district judge for the District Court for the Northern Mariana Islands. I'm so happy that I actually decided to pursue my dreams and I hope that all others would do so. And I think to get through all the challenges that will probably and likely occur, you need to establish some values. Hard work and perseverance and trust in other people when necessary. I think that is a lot of the reason for my current success. In 2020, Chief Judge Manglona led the construction and opening of a new state-of-the-art federal courthouse in Saipan. And Chief Judge Manglona has another distinction. She is the only federal judge who also handles magistrate judge duties and bankruptcy judge duties. She is the only district court judge who has all three responsibilities. For the U.S. Courts in Washington, I'm Bridget Lyles. Thanks for watching.